black cohosh. Have you ever heard of it? It's an herbal supplement that's very often recommended for women in menopause, especially for hot flashes. We're going to take a look today at the science underneath black cohosh that tells you whether or not black cohosh is really effective and safe for using in women in menopause. I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources. Most of those are about hormones and hormone optimization. This particular video is a little bit of an exception to that rule because this is about an herbal supplement, uh, but we'll talk about hormones along the way, of course. By the time you get to the end of this video, you'll have a, a pretty good understanding of the science that decides whether or not black cohosh is really effective and safe as a treatment for menopause symptoms. So black cohosh, this is a, a, a monograph from the National Institutes of Health. Black cohosh is a member of the buttercup family. It's a perennial plant that's native to North America. There are a bunch of other names for the herb, including snake root, black bugbane, rattleweed. Native Americans have used it for a long time for muscle, muscle pain, for fever, for cough. The most common way black cohosh is recommended these days is for menopausal hot flashes. We learned a little bit in science class about the scientific method. And that's all about coming up with a hypothesis or some type of statement. In this case, our hypothesis might be that uh, black cohosh is an effective, safe treatment for menopause symptoms. And then what we would do in the scientific method is we would come up with an experiment to try to either prove or disprove the statement or the hypothesis. Now, uh, the most effective method in terms of herbs and supplements and pharmaceutical drugs and hormones of determining whether that, that herb might be effective is through the use of what's called a randomized controlled trial. It's a particular type of experiment where usually you have at least two different treatment arms. So one arm might be the black cohosh, where a person takes black cohosh and then you see the results. And then another arm would be a placebo, where a patient takes uh, some type of inactive, often called a sugar pill, but that's not necessarily inactive. But a placebo is an, a, some form of something that a, that a person takes that is supposed to have zero effect or very minimal effect. And so you can compare those two effects. Now, in the case of randomized control trials, very often an additional uh, arm, so they might have three arms of that trial, the, the herb, let's say black cohosh, a placebo, and the, the, the third arm might be something like a hormone replacement therapy, which has been proven to be effective in treating menopausal symptoms. So we'll look at those three in a couple of the trials. Now, I, I will say at the outset that I've chosen two trials that are relatively well designed. They seem to be relatively well known. They're not brand new. They're 10, 12 years old. Um, and they are not the be-all and end-all. They're not all the information about black cohosh, but they're sort of representative. They represent what the science says about black cohosh. The first one is an article entitled Safety and Efficacy of Black Cohosh and Red Clover for the Management of Vasomotor Symptoms, a Randomized Controlled Trial. So there's that term, randomized controlled trial again. And then the second one I'd like to take a look at is called Treatment of Vasomotor Symptoms of Menopause with Black Cohosh, multi-botanicals, soy, hormone therapy, or placebo. So I kind of wanted to look closely at a couple of the graphs or the, the charts from some of those randomized control trials, those two particular trials that I talked about. The first one is from this trial called the Treatment of Vasomotor Symptoms of Menopause with Black Cohosh, multi-botanicals, soy, hormone therapy, or placebo. So if we look closely at this graph, this is a little bit of a rough graph, but um, we can kind of see up in this area here, on the, on the left side, it shows vasomotor symptoms per day. So that basically has to do with hot flashes and night sweats and those types of symptoms every day. What we'll see is, in general, women started out somewhere between six and a little bit more than seven on average of hot flashes per day. That's actually a fairly low number. I've heard as many as uh, 144 per day from some women, but that's neither here nor there. In this particular group of women who were tested with these uh, herbs and uh, various treatment uh, ideas, they started out between six and seven 
a hot flashes per day, roughly. Now you notice they're all, they're all grouped very closely together in between six and seven at the beginning. So that's basically before they started anything. So we see that the black cohosh is the line that has diamonds in it. It's a little hard to see here, but essentially it's there and it's there and it's there. So this line kind of goes down for the first three months. It goes from maybe a little over six to maybe four and a half, somewhere in that neighborhood. So there's a little bit of a drop off. And then after that, um, it, it basically flattens out and there's not a whole lot of change between three months and uh, a year for the black cohosh group. Now, if we <clears throat> take another look and we look at the placebo, that's the one with the circles. It actually looks very, very similar to the, the lines for the black cohosh group. It goes down a little bit for the first three months and then kind of flattens out from months three to 12. So the placebo and the black cohosh don't show a whole lot of difference in the long run. They're pretty much the same. I mean, there's some slight differences. But the, the results of this controlled trial actually show that there were not significant, uh, statistically significant differences between, between the placebo and the black cohosh. So if we look at the other trial, safety and efficacy of black cohosh and red clover for the management of vasomotor symptoms, a randomized controlled trial, we can see the, the chart from this trial, which actually looks extremely similar. It's a little bit nicer looking, but the results are quite similar to the results of the other trial. Uh, for the first graph here shows vasomotor symptoms per week. The second one shows hot flashes per week and then the intensity. But for all practical purposes, these graphs, if you look at the colors and kind of the general trends of the colors, they're all roughly the same. So let's kind of focus on the, the first one that's all about vasomotor symptoms per week. So if we look at this vasomotor symptoms per week, the yellow is the, the black cohosh, and that one has a very similar pattern. So it starts out at maybe, oh, roughly 68 or 70 vasomotor symptoms per week or hot flashes per week, and those kind of drop off in the first three months. And then the curve is a little bit shallower for the next three, and it, it kind of flattens out over the course of the year. Now, interestingly, this top line is the black cohosh. This line right here is placebo. Now, in this particular study, the placebo seems to be quite a bit better at reducing those hot flashes and vasomotor symptoms. So these patients started out a little bit lower, but they actually ended up quite a bit lower too. So there's a bit of a difference between the, the black cohosh and the, the placebo. So the bottom line in those two randomized controlled trials is that black cohosh was shown to not be all that much more effective or probably even a little less effective than placebo at reducing menopausal hot flashes and vasomotor symptoms. So I've looked at a couple of randomized controlled trials, which are obviously not all the science around black cohosh, but they're kind of representative of what the studies would show. Um, in addition to those two randomized trials that specifically looked at specific sets of patients, I also looked closely at something called the Cochrane Review. The Cochrane Group is a group of, well, somewhat unbiased scientists who do what are called meta-analyses. And that is where they'll take multiple randomized controlled trials and kind of combine the results together. So the Cochrane Review started out with something like 552 trials. Uh, and then it narrowed it down to 30 that were available in full text articles. And then 16 of those were included in analysis. And so they ended up with 16 studies and they may end up uh, throwing a few of them out because of their design or whatever. So when we look at the author's conclusions in the Cochrane study, we can see this review is unable to draw any conclusions about the effect of orally administered mono preparations of black cohosh on the frequency and intensity of vasomotor symptoms or global changes in menopausal symptom scores. The effect of black cohosh on vaginal atrophy, quality of life, sexuality, and bone health is also inconclusive. Um, no evidence was found that black cohosh was associated with more risk of harm than placebo, 
but there was insufficient good evidence to reach a firm conclusion on safety. So basically the Cochrane Review, which pooled a number, at least 16 different uh, randomized control trials together, they had a hard time reaching a conclusion about black cohosh. They felt like it was probably safe, but not conclusively so. They also couldn't conclude that it was all that effective against at least menopausal hot flashes, and especially not against any other menopause symptoms. I want to go back to our diagrams and talk a little bit about those in terms of the other things that were used as treatments in those randomized trials. If we look at the, the key for this particular trial, this shows a CEEMPA, which is basically a particular type of hormones that are used in menopause. That is basically hormone replacement. And if we look at this particular graph, we can see that the hormone replacement had a dramatic decrease in the number and intensity of vasomotor symptoms in these women. So vasomotor symptoms in women on hormones went from actually the highest these women had, uh, looks like 70, 75 symptoms per week, and that went down to uh, what looks like less than 10. So it was an absolutely significant reduction in those women's hot flashes with hormone replacement therapy. When you compare that to placebo, it's substantially less of a drop. They, the placebo women went from what, 52 or so, down to 22, so there was a drop, but this, the yellow line, is the black cohosh. Those women went from 64, 65, down to uh, maybe 58, something in that area. So a much less significant drop in the women on black cohosh as compared to the women who took placebo, and even a, a bigger drop for women who took hormone replacement therapy. So all this to say, black cohosh may not be the most effective treatment for menopausal hot flashes, especially when you compare it, first of all, to placebo, or taking nothing, and second of all, when you compare it to taking hormone replacement therapy, or optimizing your hormones, as I like to say. Now, the other thing that I'd really like to point out is these two randomized controlled trials and many of the others around black cohosh really focus on hot flashes and night sweats, what are called vasomotor symptoms in these trials. Now those are an important and one of the biggest, most commonly complained about symptoms in menopause, but they are by far not the only symptoms of menopause. I get a lot of women complaining about weight gain, about insomnia, about anxiety, about depression, about irritability, about bloating and breast tenderness, and uh, all kinds of symptoms that are not really related to uh, vasomotor symptoms, hot flashes, or night sweats. And black cohosh has not really shown any effectiveness at any of these other symptoms. However, optimizing your hormones does have an impact not only on reducing those symptoms, but it can, in fact, eliminate the majority of those menopause symptoms. Obviously, not every single woman will be able to take hormone replacement therapy. I would contend that many more women than you might think are good candidates to have their hormones optimized. Well, if this video has been helpful at all, be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons, and maybe uh, click that little bell to make sure you get notified anytime I post a new one. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon.